Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Jeanette Teed from Medicine Hat, Alberta. This Mass is offered in memory of her parents, Friedim and Aileen Poulen, her husband Kurt, her sister Marie Rain, her relatives living and deceased, for peace in her family, and for the priests who helped her spiritually throughout her life. By choosing to remember the deceased members of your family, in this way you are joined by thousands of people across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we enter into this mystery of the Eucharist, where we also remember the feast day of St. Irenaeus, let us remember that we are sinners, constantly in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you called St. Irenaeus to uphold your truth and bring peace to your church. By his prayers, renew us in faith and love that we may always be intent on fostering unity and peace. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. During the night, the men of Sodom, both young and old, had tried to attack the two travelers who were guests in the home of Lot. When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or else you will be consumed in the punishment of the city. But Lot lingered, so the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought Lot out and left him outside the city. When the angels had brought them outside, they said, Flee for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the hills, or else you will be consumed. And Lot said to them, O oh, no, my lords, your servant has found favor with you, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot flee to the hills, for fear the disaster will overtake me and I die. Look, that city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. The Lord said to Lot, Very well, I grant you this favor too and will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. Therefore the city was called Zoar. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife, behind him, looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord, and he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and saw the smoke of the land going up like the smoke of a furnace. So it was that when God destroyed the cities of the plain, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow 
when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had settled. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea, so great that the boat was being swamped by the, wa by the waves, but he was asleep. And when they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. The disciples were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember in one of my travels, I was got into a plane, and I'm not much of a flyer. It's not that I don't like flying. I love flying. I'm just afraid of crashing. So when I was on the plane, I remember... Uh, uh, we were boarding, and there were a number of spots available. And then at the very end, I noticed there were a lot of stewardesses and pilots probably making connections, and they all kind of 
joined in and they were sitting here and there and some were in front of me and some were in the side of me and I kept an eye on them. Throughout the uh, plane uh, ride, I noticed that we had a little bit of turbulence and we're not much into turbulence. I don't know, it always happens whenever you have your drink. Just as you have your Coke in front of you, that's when the turbulence begins and then you drink it very quickly. And I was there and I was, as the turbulence started to get a little heavy, I noticed the pilots, some of them were sleeping, some of them were reading their newspapers, some of them were just playing games. And I thought to myself, oh good, if they don't think this is any problem, then I'm okay. Now, if I began to see one or two of them started to say the rosary, I'd be concerned. We are comforted by those whom we believe are in kind of leadership. I remember uh, my administrative assistant at the parish, Liz Ripka, she said that when she flies, although she doesn't like flying as well, all she needs to do is look at the stewardess and if she's smiling and seems to be no concern that she's okay. For us, in today's Gospel, we see Jesus on the boat sleeping. And there is a big windstorm, the waves begin to swamp the boat, and of course the apostles who are there begin to be concerned for their life. And they begin to wake Jesus up. Jesus must have been a very heavy sleeper. He must have been very tired. To be able to sleep while the boat is rocking, up and down it must have mean that Jesus was very very tired and we see that even with children we lie them down and it doesn't matter how much noise is around them and how much we move them they're just in a sense dead to sleep so Jesus was dead to sleep and they woke him up and they said Lord don't aren't you aren't you concerned we're, we're dying here and Jesus turns to them and says why are you afraid you little faith Jesus was saying to them I'm here why are you worried? In a way, Jesus was saying to them, look, if you're on in a boat, I'm the pilot. Don't worry. Everything's okay. And we can feel as if our life is swamped. We have people who are sick. We have the news coming from a doctor if it's going to be cancer or not. Many, many issues that we deal with. A son or a daughter who might be running away or leaving the faith. We can be so preoccupied by these waves in life that we might forget that the Lord is with us. He's in the boat of our life with us. And everything with Him is okay. It might not mean that we're going to have everything rosy, that the doctor is not going to say the word cancer or, or some other disease that we might have. No. Life will continue, but yet the Lord will be with us in our journey. We can be assured that when the Lord is in our life, we do not have to be afraid, for the Lord picks us up. I think of the child who, you know, when they're very small, they are on a ledge, and the parent says, jump, jump. And the child, for some strange reason, jumps into the arms of the parent. I know if my father said that to me, jump, Laborio, jump, I wouldn't jump because with my weight, I think I would crush him. But you know, we have to have that leap of faith to be able to jump into the arms of our loving Father, trusting that the Holy Spirit inside of us leads us to God. There are as I said, many waves in life. But the Lord is in the boat with us. Oh, how a comfort, comforting feeling it was when I was on that, um, that plane. When I saw the pilots and they were all okay, even with the turmoil, I didn't have to drink that Diet Coke very quickly. I could just leave it there, even with the trembling because I realized there were other pilots here and they weren't concerned. So we should be with our life. How many people phone and talk to us as priests and ask for prayers? And we try to assure them that we will remember them in our, in our prayers. That, and we try to assure them that the Lord is there. That although difficulties might arise, the Lord is present. 
What a blessing it is for us to know that we are not alone, that on the boat of life, or one might say the plane of life, everything is good because the pilot or the captain of the boat is Jesus. We might think he's sleeping, but he's not. He's wide awake, and because he loves us, he makes sure nothing will lead us away from him. So let us keep us, let us keep our focus on that wonderful pilot, that wonderful captain, that he will be with us always. Let us always trust and not be afraid. Let us stand now and offer our petitions before the Lord, knowing and trusting that he hears us. Let us pray for Pope Benedict, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be fearless in their message of hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. Let us pray for those who have heavy crosses, that they may know that the Lord carries it with them and is with them in their heaviness of life and their waves of turmoil, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for those who have asked for prayers at this TV Mass, that the Lord may hear them and help them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our And for our private prayers that God hears, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, we are never alone, but you are with us in the boat of life. May we always trust that you are present, you who are Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of me for our good and Lord, Lord, as we celebrate the feast of St. Irenaeus, may this Eucharist bring you glory, increase our love of truth, and help your church to remain firm in faith and unity. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You give the church this feast in honor of St. Irenaeus. You inspire us by his holy life, instruct us by his preaching, and give us your protection in answer to his prayers. We join the angels and the saints as they sing the unending hymn of praise. Oh, 
Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Irenaeus, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Benedict, our Bishop Thomas, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family who have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. We pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope 
for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer of Father Carlo Maria Martini. Lord, help me enter into that peace which consists in having put my life in your hands. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, by these holy mysteries, increase our faith, and by the holy bishop, Irenaeus, reached eternal glory by being faithful until death, so may we be saved by living our faith. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remember to pray for vocations. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to Jeanette T. from Medicine Hat, Alberta whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.